What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. We are back part two with the Toyota Century air suspension install from Airlift and uh, we're gonna dive right in. If you saw those clips before, my friend Anthony aka Halcyon stopped by and he started shooting a full feature of the NSX which I am extremely excited for. I got this thing all cleaned and polished up for when he showed up. We've been trying to get together to shoot for the longest time and every single time that we came up with a schedule, it got taken over by an event or something came in the middle. We finally were able to link and it was like the coolest thing ever. So I'm really, really excited to see that video when it's done. We have a couple more sessions of filming that we have to do, but it's gonna be absolutely insane. Also, the NSX low cars, high standards, tees and hoodies are almost sold out. I have probably 30 of each left. So hop in the link in the description, check them out, pick one up before they're all gone. And now we're back in with the Century. So in the last video, there was a couple things that I forgot to mention and a couple things that you guys actually pointed out, which is very important and I'm glad that you guys did. But I went ahead and installed it before I started filming and I'm gonna walk you guys through exactly how I did it. So coming over here to the airlift manifold, like I said in the last video, each one of these is labeled. So all four of these are for the struts themselves, the suspension. And these last two are for the tank and the exhaust drain. This one right here is for tank. So you run the airline through here, comes down through this hole. Here is the water trap. I have it mounted on the side of the flow tank. The line from the manifold comes up into this 90 degree push to connect, and then it comes out this side. So any water that's running through the system will end up being caught in here. And there's a little barb fitting on the bottom that you can push to drain the water out. It's very helpful, especially if you're in a cold climate. Ran the line out this way, down under along the side, and then out into the tank. When you look at the setup from here, you can't see the line at all, and you can barely see the water trap, so that's perfect. And then the second line here is the exhaust drain, so when you air out, the air will come out of that line. And I have that strapped, P-clamped to one of the air compressor lines, so that's nice and tucked up should not get in the way when this is in the car. So the trunk setup is officially done and ready to go back in. Before we do that, we have to install all of the struts. And once again, this series is sponsored by Airlift Performance. So if you guys need any airlift parts for your cars, I will leave a link in the top of the description. Be sure to check them out because in my opinion, they are the top tier air suspension brand and I know that you guys will be happy with it if you guys get parts for your car. In this box is the rear strut for the Century. And what's funny is that this is an LS400 kit. Centuries, this generation, has the same suspension as an LS400. If you were to ever get under one of these cars, everything is identical, even the exhaust is identical. These are super nice, 32-way adjustable dampening, double bellow, air suspension, and these will be perfect for the car. In the last video, we already got all four struts disconnected from the top, so all we have to do is get this thing higher up on the lift and disconnect everything and we can get all the struts out and swap these in. Before we do that though, I wanna make sure that all of the lines get hooked up. That way everything can be ran and good to go. The kit comes with all the lines and all the fittings for whatever size hose that you're planning on running. Like I said, I'm running quarter inch. So this will be really straightforward. We'll probably do the fronts first and then we'll move on to the rears. And this car will be on the ground in this video. So I'm very, very excited to see that. Okay, so I didn't film taking the first one out because I wanted to make sure that I knew everything that I was doing before I started talking about it. And uh, it was a little bit of a pain, but not too bad. Very similar to an LS400 since all this stuff is pretty much the same. Um, disconnect from the top. Top is disconnected. Second thing, uh, disconnected the upper A-arm. So this guy right here, disconnected that. Usually you probably don't need to do that, but because the bag itself is so wide that it uh, it needed to come out so that it would fit through. So after that, it was just the bottom bolt for the strut and then that was all good to go. So all of that dropped out. Now I'm gonna get the new bag prepped to go in. First thing, obviously wheel off. We already have the air uh, line disconnected from the bag. It just gave a little pop, air drains out, it's fine. And then uh, like we said, castle nut for the upper A-arm. That guy comes out. It actually came out really, really easy on this car, which I would only assume is because the car is super clean and from Japan and stuff like that. So it should only take a couple whacks and that will come loose. 
and then it's just the uh, lower strut bolt. All right, there you go. We're out. I ain't ready. Hold on. All right now. Yep. Look at the unit. Things unnecessarily big. There you go. All right, buddy. Oh, this is gonna be fun. And then once it's done, you just give it a little pop. All right, then. <laughs> Rear out. Um, a lot of Japanese dirt here. So I'm probably gonna want to move this old line out the way. That way it's not in the way. And then, is it metal or is it plastic? Um, line's plastic, fitting's metal. Okay. I'll probably still tie it out of the way just in case. I don't want it rubbing against the new one. Same thing as the front. Go back in. It's just going to be a huge pain to tighten the front, the top, because century and then seats. You love. Don't remind me. You love the seats. Thank God I had to work for that. Don't remind me. <laughs> the rears were a little bit more annoying because everything uh, needs to go in at the exact same time because of the struts or the sway bar fighting you. Um, but me and Cam got both in, they're adjusted, and we just gotta tighten them down and then plug in the air lines and all the struts will be installed. Done, and then we can get food and finish the rest of this tomorrow because it's late and we're hungry. But I'm, I'm excited. This is gonna be stoked. <laughs> he was gonna say I'm stoked. I was gonna say I'm stoked. <laughs> Sam. It's not focusing because it's Thank you're ugly. Thank God. Okay. I know I'm ugly. All right, it's late. We're probably going to pick back up tomorrow, but I thought that I'd be able to set this thing down and uh, see it aired out, but it's resting on the lift. So all four struts are in tight. All the lines are plugged in, ran. So everything with the trunk setup that I spoke about earlier can go straight into the trunk tomorrow. Plugged in, all the compressors and stuff will get soldered up. Then we'll tackle the interior, get the back seats and everything put back together. And then all that's left is plug and then all that's left is plug the battery in, make sure everything works, calibrate the system. So tomorrow's half of this video is going to be sick. I have been waiting so long to see this thing on the ground. Just this car is massive and it just gives Rolls Royce vibes and yeah, it's, it's going to be so sick seeing it on the floor. You guys have seen me done a ton of suspension stuff with all of my cars in the past, but I'm really stoked to be able to actually walk you guys through the entire process of doing air on a car myself. It's challenging, it's rewarding, it's fun, and doing it with a bunch of your friends makes it even better. I'll see you guys in the morning. Okay, it's the next day, and uh, we are about to get the trunk set up put into the car. Before I do that, I need to hook up the air compressor power wires to the air compressors themselves. And to do that is super easy. Because I'm running dual compressors, this is the second compressor harness, and I already have little bits of uh, heat shrink on the ends of those. And then this is the main harness that has the plug for the manifold on it, which also has lines for the compressor. I'm gonna conjoin these to the air compressors. Doesn't matter which one hooks up to where, and then after that, to actually join the compressors together and complete the system, there's this little wire here, 
and this little connector there. You connect those together and it completes the system for the compressors. So super easy. We're gonna figure out how to balance this in the trunk somehow and then I can get everything hooked up. Also, LS400's here and Cam. Cam's back. I am LS400. Hi, yes. This is Cam. <laughs> LS400's in here. Uh, Sam took on a cool project recently of doing tables in the car. So we got some tables and they came black, leather was old. She reupholstered them and they came out phenomenal. So we're in the process of putting those in and cleaning the car out as well. But, but now we're gonna balance this thing in here and make sure that we can get all these wires hooked up. And then uh, trunk setup is done. Okay, both air compressors are hooked up, uh, heat shrinked, good to go. And now I'm trying to snake all of the air lines uh, up through the piece of wood in the right spots that they need to go. And thankfully, we labeled them in the last video. So this is front left, this is right front, right rear, left rear. And then, like I said before, the manifold is labeled. So I know which one goes to what. That way, when you're adjusting on your controller, everything is accurate. The far left one is left front. I'm gonna snake this line up through the far left hole if it will reach, which it will not. We need to figure out a better way to get this propped in here to where I can snake all these up and through. Okay, so trunk setup is in. Everything's plugged in aside from the computer itself and that plug is right here chilling. I'm just going through and trimming the excess. We got all the lines ran to where they're supposed to be through the correct holes in the wood. Airlift sends a super convenient tool for cutting the lines super clean because you want them to be straight, flat, super clean cuts. If there are any jagged edges or anything, you don't want to use like a razor because there's a strong chance that they might leak. You basically come here, set your line in the center, and then just a quick snip, that's it. Super clean, straight cut. And then now I'm just gonna push the excess back through and then plug it into the grommet in the manifold. And you'll feel it click. That's it biting, so it's not gonna pop back out. And that's it. So I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. Put it in, quick snip, feed the excess, line it up, plug it in. And that, my friends, is your completed trunk set. And it looks awesome. I love that. Everything in the trunk is done and it looks awesome. I love the simple setup and everything is symmetrical, everything lines up and hopefully everything's tight. Feels like everything's tight. I went through, sealed everything when I was putting everything together. So I have high hopes that this will uh, not leak, but fingers crossed. Everything is hooked up. The struts are hooked up, lines are hooked up from there all the way to the back into the manifold. Uh, harnesses ran, all plugged in. So I think it's time to plug the battery in and turn the key on and see if we hear compressors and we see the controller light up and everything like that. This was a nightmare, but what we've been trying to do is run the controller to a cool part of the car that can be hidden and out of the way. Um, and like I said, there's no write-ups for anything on taking this car apart. Um, but eventually after a bunch of finagling and fucking around with stuff, we got this out and perfect because we can run the controller in here and this is electric, it'll close. Also, I want to show this. This is a little access piece. Real wood, all right? For all the people, I've seen people commenting saying that it's not real wood, it's real. Everything in here, all the wood in here is real and that's kind of just crazy. But um, now that we have this popped out, we can snake the controller wire through, hook up the controller and it can live inside of here and be covered. So we got a W, finally. You wanna do the honors, buddy? Oh 
yes sir. We have power to the controller, everything is working. We put some pressure in all four bags just to uh, see if there's any leaks. And it looks like the numbers are all staying solid. So once we get some weight on the ground, it might change a little bit and we can, might notice some things here and there. But for now, it looks like they're, uh, they're chilling. So that's awesome. And we got this routed in the little cubby. Ooh, that's perfect. It's so good. <laughs> I'm happy that, that that works. Yeah, it took us like a good hour to figure out how to get this thing apart. It's like two monkeys football trying to figure it out. <laughs> but now uh, the fun part is the back seats, putting those back in. So we're going to try and tackle that mess. Of... Yeah. Not happy. <laughs> Okay, car's on the ground. <laughs> car's on the ground, did a quick oil change too. This thing needed it, but now we are gonna see this thing air out for the first time. Um, we still need to calibrate the system, but we can at least drop all the pressure and take a look, so. Cam, do the honors. I'm gonna do it manually. Front goes first. Front okay. Oh man, <laughs> that's so sick. So now that we saw it aired out on the ground, uh, we need to calibrate the system. So it's gonna air up, air down, air each corner up, kind of get a feeling for everything. And then we can set our presets, figure out what ride height we like. It's, oh, it's so weird seeing the roof line of this thing. Like this car was so tall before. Calibrate, sir. Vehicle on a level surface, yes. yes Wheel straight. Yes. All wheels and free of obstructions. Yes. Let's turn the vehicle on too. Alright. Manifold mounted. We Manifold done. mounted. We done did it. Two compressors. Do you have height sensors? No. no. Vehicle is ready to move. Send it. Now I'm gonna time lapse this so you guys can see the process of this thing calibrating. It's always funny to me how much longer a car looks once it's lower and this thing just got a whole nother foot longer. It is huge. It doesn't even fill the frame of the camera. I'm like, I'm so excited about this. 16s, basically fendered a lip already. I have very cool plans with these wheels. I'm going to be sending them out very soon. Oh, this is so sick. Looks like a, like a hovercraft right now. Right, Nuki? Yeah, you don't improve. <laughs> it, it really does look longer. I had this thing parked here like right when I first got it and it looks different. <laughs> well, obviously it looks different. It's low as shit now, but God, that's sick. I'm excited to watch this thing come together. Yeah, me too. The first part of the puzzle is done. already fitting. Done, well. sit, good to go. Oh, that's so sick. I gotta do a shoot with these two cars together once this thing has like wheels and stuff. Mm -hmm. That would be. Stoic. Stick. That what? <laughs> I would be stoked about that. God, dude, we almost made it through the video. The last, that's the last time I'm saying that in this video. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, you can see the change of shirt. We went and got dinner and came back because we were gonna try and take this car to dinner and we ran into a small little issue. Ours my fault was absolutely my fault when we first installed the airlines and ran them inside the car uh when we put all the shielding back on i didn't make sure that any of the hardware was out of the way of the line and one of the nuts was slightly putting some pressure on one of the lines and it was causing it to air up weird so we kind of needed to diagnose that. Thankfully the line is okay, so it's not a big deal. We were able to fix that and then get this thing actually calibrated and it looks so cool. We got that line all fixed, calibrated, system's good to go. I'm gonna take this thing for a drive tomorrow once there's some daylight. It's like 10 o'clock right now, so 
I want to get some really nice shots of this thing outside. We'll probably put the NSX next to it because both airlift cars, both black cars, it's just going to be sick. Um, but I am very happy with how this turned out. Huge shout out to Airlift for sponsoring this car and sending this kit out. It was awesome to work with. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I will leave a link at the top of the description for you guys to check out Airlift's website. See if they have anything for your car, whether it's an Airlift 3P kit, a 3H kit, or a 3S kit. I know you'll be happy with it. I've had multiple Airlift setups and I've enjoyed every single one of them. The quality of their stuff, their warranty service, and their customer service is all amazing. But yeah, I'm gonna get some shots of this thing tomorrow with the NSX, so I'll see you guys then. That's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. It is so cool to see this thing finally bagged on some proper airlift performance air suspension. It looks phenomenal. I took it out this morning and got coffee in it and the thing rides almost close to stock, which I was kind of worried about. And that's part of the reason why I held off on doing air on this for a little bit because replicating factory air from the 90s is like at least the comfort standpoint is very hard to do. But airlift killed it. It feels amazing, it rides amazing, install was easy, and Blake from Airlift, huge shout out to you for the little tips and tricks and things while I was calling you here and there about questions. It was a big help, and now this thing is finished and it looks amazing next to the NSX. On top of that, I know I get a lot of comments in the videos asking when the Del Sol is gonna be coming back to the channel. It is, and I do have plans for it this year. I just wanted to get the Supra and the Century going a little bit more. I'd like to get the Supra finished before I start doing Del Sol stuff. Try and take things one at, one at a time, two at a time. But I do have plans for that car. It is gonna be coming back. But I hope you guys enjoyed this little quick series of installing air on the Century. Now, if you guys need to do any air installs on your cars, you have something that can help you. It's a very straightforward process. God, look at the sky and everything right now. This is perfect. I love this. It's so cool seeing the Del Sol sitting here and then the future cars. The future cars I never thought that I'd have sitting here. It's crazy. Thank you guys for watching this video. Like I said in the beginning, I have NSX hoodies and tees. The low cars, high standards hoodies and tees are still on the site. They're selling out quick along with some awesome new stickers. So be sure to check them out. I'll leave the link in the description and I will see you guys in the next video. Life,